What's up guys, Isaac here and I just want to make this quick video to let you guys know that I'm going to be starting a new segment on this channel which is going to be a question and answer segment because I've noticed those are really popular and it's an easy way for me to give you guys value and for you to tell me exactly um, the problems you're dealing with and for me to share some of my thoughts and whatnot. So if you want to ask a question, you can write a question in the comment section or you can directly message me on my Facebook fan page. The link is in the description. If you haven't already liked that, go and like that. So hopefully this is gonna help out a lot of you guys. And the theme of this question and answer is gonna be, of course, the theme of the channel, which is personal development, self-actualization, success, you know, just becoming the best and most ideal version of yourself. So I'm really excited about that and I hope you guys enjoy this first segment. Peace. Nazebriel asks, how do I overcome my procrastinating? I want to do all my work, but I'm the biggest procrastinator on the planet. What do I do? Now, procrastination is something that I'm sure has affected all of us at some stage in our life when we really want to do something, but we just can't get started. And we end up having to do the thing last minute, rush it, and usually not do the best job that we could have done. Now, I have a few strategies that I've come up with or that I've used to help me with procrastinating. Don't get me wrong, I still procrastinate at some stages, but the frequency has definitely gone down. And I understand all too well about procrastinating, studying this engineering degree. Some things that you do are just, you just don't want to do them. But to tackle your question, I would say the first thing you have to do is to not look at the whole task, but to break it down into the small possible amount. The human mind will naturally exaggerate the magnitude of pain you will feel from accomplishing certain tasks. As we all know, we try to avoid pain and seek our pleasure. That's just the default. So what you need to do is you need to see what the task is and try and think of the smallest possible thing you can do just so that you can get started. For example, perhaps you're procrastinating on writing a article. The smallest amount of thing you can do is maybe just write the first paragraph, the introductory paragraph, or maybe just the title. Just anything to get you started, because once you get started, you're actually halfway there. The problem with procrastinating is that you don't get started. If you can manage to get yourself into the work environment and start something, you, you, you are pretty much already on the pathway of success. And in order to help you do this, the second tip is to optimize your environment. You don't want to make things hard for yourself. If you need to get something done, you need to make it so that it's very easy for you to access that thing or to get started. For example, if you have some project you have to start working on, the best thing you can do is have your computer or your desk near your bed, have everything set up the night before, as soon as you wake up, it's already there looking at you and you just need to walk over to the desk and start working. The problem a lot of people encounter is that they make things difficult for themselves. They um, start off on a bad slate where things are not arranged properly. They don't have certain resources that they might need and it discourages you and it helps you get back into that procrastinating mode. So you have to make sure the environment is set up very nicely. Number three. You need to have something to track your progress and to schedule breaks as well. The fact that you're scheduling breaks kind of relaxes the mind a bit. It gets rid of that um, pain that you have envisioned in your mind. So schedule yourself um, a break. For example, when I do certain work, I have a book, like and I sell a grid. And for every 30 minutes I work, I put a cross in one of the grids. After about an hour of solid work, I allow myself to take a break and then come back and do it again. I keep a stopwatch ready so that when I'm actually doing work, I have no browsers, I have nothing to distract me. I just go 100% in on the work. Now, the thing about this is you can allow yourself to take breaks maybe after one hour. But if the one hour comes and you're still feeling good and you're really engaged in your work, keep at it by all means. Keep going for as long as you need to until you actually need a break. 
So the break is just there as kind of a buffer so that you have some assurance that you won't be doing the work for you know multiple hours and it helps you um, deal with the stress or the pain that you might feel about doing it. So if you really get into this flow state where you're really engaged into your work, don't take the break. Just keep going and get as much as you can done while you're in this optimal state of work. Okay, another tip is to prioritize. Understand that not everything is of equal value. Do what's most important, of course. If you have a certain bit of the report or something that you have to do, maybe do the discussion. If you have a app you have to build, maybe make the foundational, um, the foundation of the app first before you start putting in all these little details and making it look nice and whatnot. Do what's important first. The foundation is what matters. And if you get stuck, you can do something else. Just don't stay at one piece for too long. And then you can come back to where you are stuck. You're trying to get the most amount of work done and the most optimal work done. So you have to really juggle that and manage that. Anyway, those are my tips on dealing with procrastination. I hope that helped you, Zebriel. On to the next question. Okay, Ashley's question is, how can I be less boring? This year, I feel like I don't talk a lot anymore. I usually can't keep a conversation going interesting. For example, friend, what did you do over the break? Me, nothing much. I've changed so people get the wrong idea or me, of me, and now some even ditch me. How can I be more exciting? Okay, Ashley. To be less boring in conversations, you need to focus primarily on what the other person is saying. Too many people underestimate the power of good listening in a conversation. If you're ever in a conversation with anyone, notice how quickly they are to cut you off before you finish talking. This happens frequently, as everyone feels that what they have to say is more important. So if you can flip the switch on this mindset and be able to give someone your full attention, they will actually enjoy being in conversations with you. Of course, that's just one side of the coin. You still need to talk. A conversation is like a thread. Each thread can lead to something else or lead to a different tone or direction of the conversation, kind of like a dichotomous key. For example, you said that your friend asked you what you did over the break and you just replied with nothing. Now, what you could have said to make the conversation a bit more interesting is, I regrettably was not able to do much this break. Hopefully, next break, I will be it will be different. What did you get up to on yours? See, this leads the conversation in a different direction instead of just leaving it at a dead stop with your response of nothing. And if you're paying attention to what they're saying, once they give you their response, you'll be able to, once again, get the conversation going on a different thread. And you can keep going forever. See, I've been doing this for a while and I can have a conversation with an old lady for two hours if I have to because I've mastered the skill of listening and being able to pick up the interesting things they're saying and go off that. Now, another tip is to actually have something interesting to talk about as well. And how do you develop this? Well, you can read thought-provoking books such as psychology books, philosophy, spirituality, physics, economics, basically anything that helps you get a better understanding of the world you are living in and increases your pool of knowledge. When you talk to someone and you happen to be able to relate with what they're saying maybe they're vegan and you read about veganisms or maybe they're buddhists and you read about buddhism they'll be able to connect with you on a great level because you share something with them whereas most people do not put in the effort to understand these things so when other people are you know watching daytime television you can actually be making your knowledge pool much greater also, you can make your life a lot more interesting. Do, do, do interesting things. Travel the world if you have the resources. Go to networking events. Go out. Do something new. Climb a mountain. Do some Muay Thai. Something that can make your life a bit more exciting and give you something interesting to talk about. And that is my answer to how to become less boring. What can I learn no, right now in 10 minutes that will be useful for the rest of my life? I would say meditation or conscious breathing, which is a form of meditation. 
The reason I say this is because a lot of people are in this automated mode where a stimulus happens and they just react to it or a thought happens and they follow through the thought. There's no room for consciousness or being able to discern what is going to benefit you and what's not going to benefit you. So meditation or conscious breathing helps you go back to, you know, that conscious action. It takes away that subconscious element of life where everything's automated unless you consciously decide on certain things. It builds up the prefrontal cortex as scientists have found. So the more you meditate and the more you do conscious breathing, the more you will find that you have control over your will and control over certain impulses. So just being hungry and breaking your diet straight away because the thought rose up of eating, you'll be able to see the thought for what it is as a you know natural byproduct of biology and you will just see there's a thought and not have to follow it. You won't feel a certain need to follow it. So this um, ability to be able to see thoughts and choose what you're going to follow or feel emotions and choose which ones you're going to take seriously is very important in life because it brings back the control to you. Whereas other people that are unable to know about meditation, unable to know about conscious breathing, feel like they're just ragdolls following a script. So this definitely flips the switch on life and it's the most important thing that you could probably learn in 10 minutes if you just Google it on YouTube, watch one of my videos. So that's my answer to you. Do it! Just do it!